Hello world, welcome back to Golf Sub Bar. Colt knows Drew Stoltz and a very special guest, Diletti, otherwise known <laughs> as Graham Dillette, is in the building. We're here at Augusta National. Got to say a big thank you to our friends, Savannah River Brewing Company for having us. We're getting amongst it here with some beers, fellas. A lot of people oh, are here. You've got a lot of folks at the Savannah River Brewing Company firing, hitting some dogs into the mat. And you know what they're hitting, Colt? A little tailor-made, because over the last 40 years, you've inspired the engineers at TaylorMade to make a lot of great drivers, but all materials eventually reach their limit. Now it's time to leave titanium behind because the future belongs to carbon. Introducing the all-new TaylorMade Stealth Carbon Wood with a red 60-layer carbon face for better energy transfer and more ball speed. Welcome to the carbon wood age. Leader in the clubhouse right now, I'm told, 306 yards. Damn. Can you touch it, Graham? I would have to have a few more beers and stretch this <laughs> We can little. handle that. We can just so happens we can handle that. Well, guys, I don't know if y'all know this, but it is the 86 Masters, and the one Tiger Woods is scheduled to tee it up. He's also playing a tailor-made stealth, you know. I think he can get it past 306, but Graham, you're here covering the golf for TSN. How exciting is this that Tiger Woods Amazing. might be teeing it up? Most this likely going to be teeing it up. This is it. I mean, like, there's been a lot of speculation, obviously, the last few days, but this is it. I mean... This is why we're here. This is why you guys are at Savannah Brewing tonight, is because of Tiger Woods. He's the man. Is he I'm excited. Beers? I'm, I'm under not. the impression that he is. <laughs> Let's operate under that assumption for the remainder of the night. But you've been through, you know, you had the back surgery, you had a similar, I think the exact same back surgery as Tiger. Granted, you didn't have any car accident with your leg and stuff, but like going through what he's gone through with the back, like how impressive when you stack on other stuff on right. top of that, that he's gotten back. It's funny, I was is. talking to Noda today, Noda Begay, and he was, he was like, the one thing Tiger told me is like, nobody's talking about my back anymore. And like, every time I do an interview, it's always like, hey, how's your back? And it does get old, right, all of a sudden. So now he's got like a new thing to talk about, but at least they're not talking about his back. But you know, when it's all said and done, he, his back is still not going to be healthy. The storms and the cold weather and everything adds to that. And then he's got the leg. But I mean, if anyone can do it, it's Tiger. And I don't think there's any player in the field that's not cheering for him and not excited to see what he's going to do. How is your back, by the way? Not great. <laughs> <laughs> it's good enough. Every one of these makes it feel a little bit better. Yeah, no. but, you know, you've been out on tour for a very long time. You've been around Tiger Woods. I mean, in my opinion, if he didn't think he could contend, for sure. He would not be going through all the pain he's going through. I mean, the three-hour warm-up sessions to get ready, then the three-hour after-round therapy sessions. Like, he wouldn't be doing this if he just, if his goal is to make the cut. Right, for sure. And then, like, I think back to, like, the times when I was, like, really hurt and I was playing through pain, and it's like, you either wouldn't play practice rounds or it'd be nine each day, which is what he's doing. There's no practice sessions on the range. It's just, it's just hitting enough balls to warm up so you can go play. And then you spend two or three hours a day on the physio table, and that's what he's doing. So it's all, it's, it really is more important to feel good than it is to be prepared, and that's where he's at now. No one knows the course better than him. No, the weather is shit today. It's dumping rain, so they're not on the golf course. But Saturday, if you project all the way out to Saturday, it's supposed to be pretty cold. High of like 60, I believe, low in the like 44. What, how much different is it on a morning where you wake up and it's cold and you're in sweaters and you're breathing on your hands versus like a day where you wake up and it's 80? For how much sure. harder is it? It, it is. And, in, and the earlier you have to play, the harder too, because it takes your body, you know, like for me, it's like an hour of sitting on a heating pad, having a coffee or getting up and walking around a little bike ride and a stretch to kind of like get feeling good again. And so like, I mean, if he's got a 7 a.m. tea time, on, well, his tee times came out already, so he's not. 10.30. He's 10.30. And, 10 and, and, and one something. So that's early. actually a pretty good draw for him, right? Uh, but if he has to play early Saturday or Sunday, I mean, you're getting up at 2 or 3 in the morning to try to get ready. He doesn't sleep anyway. That's true. Do you think it was that. coincidence that he got a nice little draw there no. at 10.30? Not too early, not <laughs> no, too late? I don't think so. Yeah, he just fit right in there, didn't he? Well, I can't wait to see him tee it up on Thursday. His man, Joe LaCava, is going to be support, supporting some of these bibs we got here. Those we got to give nice. a big thank you to our man, Justin Pillmore. CaddyUniform.com. You can go get yourself some of these. I found my Halloween costume for the next several several years at least. Forget Halloween, dude. I'm showing up tomorrow morning and seeing if anybody goes down. I'm like, what do you need, bud? Those are <laughs> sweet. What do you lot. need? Those are these are Velcro? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. These are yeah. official, bro. Those and if you want to follow them on Instagram, go to CaddyUniform. At CaddyUniform. That's it. But Justin I Pillmore, our guy, thank you for giving us these. I bet tell you what, I've never looked so good in white. You do look good in white. I feel shirtless underneath is the look. You know what I mean? Stevie Williams let it back in the day. Uh, just let, let it breathe. breathe. Just let it breathe. But, uh, let's get back to Tiger for a second. What are your expectations for him? Honestly, well, I already put a bet in to, for him to make the cut. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't think that there's any, unless, unless he doesn't finish, if he has to withdraw, then obviously, but he's not playing if he's not going to make the cut. I saw his ball speed was at like 171 or something. That's not high. 
and he's always been kind of a bomber and attacks the par fives out here. So his scoring might be affected by his power, but I mean, like I said, man, it's Tiger Woods. Let me ask you this, though, because for the longest time, the only question mark when Tiger was showing up was, what's he going to do with the driver? And he could spray it both ways, he could miss both ways, and yet he was still winning despite that driver for a long time. So now he's a little bit slower than he was, but maybe that leads to him hitting two more fairways per round. Like, the one thing that's never been questioned in his game is his iron game. I mean, so is there a chance that, like, all right, he's not sending it like he used to maybe, but if he's hitting, you know, ten fairways around or something like that versus six like he used to, now he gets his irons going, like that's that could even be more dangerous, potentially. Yeah, very well, but could be. He played a practice round with Justin Thomas and Freddie Couples on Monday. Both of them said he was in incredible form. I mean, he was sitting up there with Justin Thomas, who, Justin Thomas is not the longest, but he's damn sure not, not sure. the shortest. I mean, he's well above average. Pound for pound, it's unbelievable how far he hits him. Yeah, totally he's about above 45. You know, I talked to Bones, um, night before and he said the same like tiger looks good he looks happy is the biggest thing that's the one thing everybody says he looks happy he looks like he's having fun he's smiling laughing joking around with the guys he's just happy to be out here at augusta national how about his uh comment did you see because he had so many people following him on monday or whatever and he's like oh everyone loves freddie yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah that's good yeah we walked out of the merchandise tent yesterday and walked out there i was like please god let let this be tiger's group otherwise there's no chance we're getting around this golf course today i mean it was like sunday Final round, final pairing. They are 10 deep on a Monday. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. But you played the Masters in 2014. I mean, how cool is it to tee it up in this event? It's the best. I mean, it's like, you guys know, man. It's like when you're no, we don't know. eight years I old. I don't know at all, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we have no clue. When you're, but when you're like eight years old hitting putts, it's always for the Masters, and your dream is always to play the Masters. And then you turn pro, and you're like, your goal is to actually get there someday. You get to the PGA Tour, and it's like, this is the hardest term in the world to get into. There's 92 guys in the field, and... You know, 10 or 15 of them were past champions. There's like 70 spots available. It's a tough one to get into. And uh, yeah, it's like a pinch yourself moment. Me and Jules came down here for a practice round, kind of in between the Florida swing. And uh, it was just, it was amazing. We're like, holy shit, man. We're at Augusta National. It's like dream come true. It's what you, like when you're hitting putts as an eight year old on the green, like this is to win the Masters. And all of a sudden you're there. Is the hardest part or one of the hardest parts as a rookie when you show up to not like spend too much time and energy on the golf course, at the golf course, leading up to Thursday? Because you, do you want to soak up every moment, I would think. For sure, and like the thing for me is I got in my own way. I mean, I remember I was playing with Trevor Immelman and there was a amateur Oliver Goss, American yeah. or, uh, Aussie kid. And uh, we got to like the eighth hole and I was like six over through eight. And I was Not bummed, start, right? No, great. Not great. Textbook. But I'm, I was on the eighth green and I was looking up and every hole they have like the threesome and what they're at and it was like you know 2014 masters Immelman one under Dillette six over I'm like fuck <laughs> but then I was like kind of look back again I'm like man I'm on a sign at Augusta yeah. National playing the masters and then from there on I settled in I didn't play great but I was even par for the you know the ne next 27 holes missed the cut but it was uh, it was a special moment I had 10 of my buddies I rented two houses one for my friends one for my family we all partied and enjoyed good. being there. I want to let you know, though, you said you were six over through eight. Sleaze on our Sirius XM show did a oh, mental yeah. round. Mm -hmm. He went through it all. He started <laughs> off birdie, birdie, birdie. I was three deep, dude, early, <laughs> bud. I was on the top. He bogeyed nine to turn in two under, so he was kicking the shit out of you. I bogeyed wow. nine, ten, Where? eleven. I ran into a So tough if you buried spot. the first three, oh, and then you went ball I bogeyed bars. four, it's long. Yeah, that's you a know tough the deal. That's a tough one. Made a nice bar on five, but I got through at minus two on the front. But I ran into a What'd little... What'd you do through the corner? 10, 11, bug, bug. Yeah. <laughs> Long hole, stuff but hole. But then? But then came back with yet another turkey burger. <laughs> 13, 14, 15. It was like Thanksgiving at Augusta, bro. It's just turkeys for days. Shot 69 in my brain. That's but I could good. come back on Friday with Good 81. opening round, though. Thanks. I weathered the storm. Yeah. I'll tell you what goes great with some Thanksgiving, as you mentioned. Doers. No. Oh, by the way. We're yeah, proud to announce the Doers as the presenting sponsor of Subpar in the official Scotch whiskey of the 122nd U.S. Open at the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts. Discover Doers' remarkable lineup of Scotch whiskeys, most notably their 12, 15, and 19-year-old limited Champions Edition, developed in partnership with the USGA. Which one do you like? Uh, my, the older, the better. The older, the better? Yeah. Like your Opposite women, Opposite huh? of his women. <laughs> Doers, the perfect after-round <laughs> indulgence. Canceled. Extraordinarily smooth, yet complex. Enjoy Doers' double-aged Scotch whiskeys any way you like. Be it neat on the rocks in a whiskey highball with a twist or a classic old-fashioned. I know that's your mm -hmm. go-to. Weddings, I tend to lean on the old-fashioned for whatever reasons, like the only time, and they are lethal. I'm an old-fashioned guy. Lethal. That's a sophisticated drink, by Hey, the way. how good was that transition going into the ad read there? Oh, dude, this is better. <laughs> Professional. Better <laughs> yeah. and I'm moves. learning, bud. Yeah, better. And on a nice rainy day in Augusta, what's better than a little doers? 
Yes. This warms is about a big day for it. Warms the belly. The older the better, like my guy said. I like it. But let's get let's get into we got some obviously a lot of guys to talk about. The top ten in the world golf rankings right now, it's ridiculous how stacked it is. I mean, I'm pretty sure, fairly confident, we could have the number one player in the world walk through this brewery right now and no, no one might even notice. Yeah. <laughs> Scotty Scheffler is the world number one. The last player to make their first start as world number one at the Masters, Ian Woosnam, 1991, and he won. Wow. So basically, Scotty's winning. What a stat. How about that? Oh, is, yeah, this not, is this not, though, Graham, the best case scenario for Scotty? This is his first, ma this is his first major as world number one, his first time showing up to a golf tournament as world number one. Is this not the dream scenario where Tiger comes in and steals every single headline, and all of a sudden uh, you're world number one, but you're under the radar? Anything about Rory. Rory's always a story coming in here, too. You know, eight times, his eighth try or whatever to win the um, grand, slam. grand Slam. No one's even talking about him. No one's talking about Bryson and his power and his health. It's like everyone's coming in under the radar. Like Dustin Johnson. Uh, no, Brooks Kepka, How many times have you heard Brooks Kepka's exactly. name mentioned him. this week? Nothing. He it's just amazing. wins majors better than almost anybody. All these guys are licking their chops right now. It's going to be an awesome Sunday. You mentioned how hard this tournament is to get into. You got the past champions. You basically got a top 50 in the world. Do you know what the highest ranking to ever win the Masters is? Oh, like the worst ranking? The, high, the worst world ranking to ever win the Masters. Uh, this is a great trivia question. Oh, wow. Is it, I'm going to say 73rd. It's pretty close. Do you want to guess well, who it I was? I said it's pretty close. Do you want to guess who it was? Well, OK, what year did the world rankings come out in? That's Early. a question for another man. OK. <laughs> I don't know. OK, I'm going to, so it's within the last 30 years. I have no idea. Um, come He's on. not here this year. Danny Willett yeah. is my guess of the person. That was, that was actually a good of guess. A guess of my person. I don't know his ranking. A Trevor Immelman. The answer is 69. And Angel Cabrera. Oh, oh wow. Yes. Not here this year. Do you think if we have the Champions <laughs> Dinner? <laughs> He's a little busy. <laughs> it'll, be, have to, it'll have to be a Zoom Champions Dinner for Angel. But have you ever seen, I mean, you, you've been out there a very long time. Scotty Scheffler's world number one. Have you ever seen a more volatile, like no. top 10 in the world? Like, if any one of the top five in the world wins this week, they're world number one. It's awesome. Golf's in such a good spot. And now Tiger's back. It's, yeah, this is You're, this you're is claiming it. Tiger's back. Back playing this back week. Back playing yeah. golf. No, but. Let's uh, just look, let's look ahead, though. Let's say Tiger is back. He plays all 72, makes the cut, plays all 72 holes. He will. When do we see him again? PGA? Yeah, probably. Just play four majors and. Yeah, I think that's best case scenario. I think as a fan, that's the best case scenario that you could ask for, it. right? And like he was saying today, like he's still gonna get uh, better. He said that his, he's not gonna be walking any better. He's gonna be kind of like restrictions, but in his joints. But he's still gonna he's gonna have less pain. So I think the better and better he starts feeling, hopefully, the more and more he starts playing. When you were getting ready for this tournament in 2014, like it's a pretty unique golf course with the undulation, the uneven lies, the green complex and stuff like that. Did you do anything different prep-wise? Or did you start, yeah. like we've heard guys start working on draws and things like that. Did yeah. you do anything different? That was, I think, part of the problem that it's like, you sometimes you put too much thought yeah. into it. Like it's, it is just golf in the end, you know? Like it was, it was cool. Like, I mean, Mike Weir was like my uh, guy that kind of took me around the golf course. It's like all these other, this is like the one tournament in the world where like someone everyone will just share their secrets and everyone else like every other tournament they tuck it away and they don't tell you but so it was cool like i mean he was always the guy that i looked up to took me around the golf course but then you start like overthinking like exactly like where you want to leave it and this and it's like man if you hit a good shot you're gonna have a birdie putt everything feeds here if you hit in the right section and when you're like almost playing like defensive and i felt like that's kind of what i did like almost trying not to miss somewhere instead of attacking where you can. I feel like so many guys do that because we had Colin Morikawa on not too long ago and he talked about like, I started working on him to draw. And he's like, dude, I don't draw it you really. But he's to. like, you don't need, he's like, now I know like you don't need to around this place. Going back to what you said about Mike Weir helping you. I mean, that's one thing Justin Thomas said today. He was like, they asked him what the best piece of advice Tiger gave him. And he's like, I'm not telling y'all. I don't want other people to know, which I thought was great. But you mentioned Mike Weir, 2003 champion. Canada's known as a hockey nation. How big was that win in Canada? He, that was every person, there's 30 million people that won the Masters that day. That's incredible. That's, like, and that's how it was. And uh, I mean, you still talk about it. He can, he basically can go anywhere he wants in the entire country and get free beer or whatever he wants because he's, he's a national treasure, man. Like he really is. It's like Fleas in Fort Worth. Exactly. <laughs> anywhere, bud. Anywhere. Just on a strip of like five or six bars in a row. Anywhere, full retail, <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> is that, is that Mike Weir winning? 
kind of like us and like for like Colt and I, our age, like 97 Masters Tiger. Like that was the moment I can I can still remember it like in my head. And that was when golf like became cool. cool. Yeah. You know? Oh, like for me, golf became cool in 97. Tiger is what really got me onto the game. Uh, and then I was a Mike Weir fan. I mean, look, look, I played golf growing up, but I was like never like, this is what I'm going to do. When Tiger won, that like fueled the fire. And then when Mike won, that's when I was like, that's what I'm going to do. So um, yeah, like that was like what triggered and you look at all the other Canadians now with Corey. I mean, what a player he is. Mackenzie Hughes is playing great. And there, we have like seven guys on tour. There's other guys in the pipeline. And it's it's the Mike Weir effect. And it took 20 years, but it's here. Yeah, now you're seeing that. That's I really love cool Corey, by the way. He picks Corey Connors. I, I, I think Corey Connors literally. Ever. I'm like, dude, watch him hit balls one time and tell me you don't think that guy's unbelievable. First off, how uh, are you it's like this? watching got, Cole putt. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a soft left elbow, mm -hmm. nice transition, and I saw the other day he had like 180 ball speed, 178. I'm like, uh, either these cameras are juiced up ball speed or Corey Connors absolutely smashing. Yeah. And then there's this other kid, Taylor Pendrith. Have you seen him oh, in a ball yet? Smash. Canadian. Adam he's Stinson, like next level. I think, is a yeah. very big talent that yeah. just needs to like figure it out. He's a great player. There's a lot of Canadians right now moving. Yeah, for sure. Whatever, USA, USA. I love America, man. I, it's the we'll second best country in the world. Cup and then we just say, piss off. Compare your, because you played President's Cup, you played Olympics, you played Augusta, all right? Compare the nerves you show up first hole of the President's Cup versus first hole of the President's Masters. Cup was the most nervous I've ever been on that first year. The most, like, energy I felt, for sure. Um, Augusta was, like, different. With like, It was, like, I was actually, like, nervous. And I was, like, thinking, I'm, like, oh, my God, I'm at the Masters. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, How different. do you not? And then it... The Olympics, it was more like pride and almost like emotion. When you got a like now I got a country. <laughs> yeah, you, you overcame. Pinchy. Well, first. that was one day, but he did the other three. That days. can happen, by the way. <laughs> Even great caddies can forget a pinchy. A case I got to ask you about the President's Cup because you gave Jason Day a rather aggressive high five, low five, whatever it was. Do you think that's part, you're partially to be responsible for the downfall of his career? I think you hit him so hard and well, messed I would, up his back. Well, first of all, wouldn't you love to have a downfall in your career like Jason Day's having? I mean, the guy's got I'd an unbelievable career. Well, of course, Jason it'd be the high, highlight of my career. But, <laughs> yeah. but that's not beside the point. I think you ruined him. He was world number one. Was he world number one at the time? Well, he, was, well, he made me look good that week. Yeah. You made some people look good, too, with a couple of little Chipinskis in that thing. The one where I got, like, really excited when I hit him, there was a guy chirping me in the back behind the green. talking like I, I had Jules. I'm like, pull the pin. I'm going to chip this in. And I heard this guy, it was like, it was kind of quiet. He was like, what are you gonna chip it in? I was like, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. And it was in, and I like pointed yeah, like, some I, nice I, things to say to him. I couldn't see where he was, well, I didn't know where, but I knew the direction, I gave him a point. So if you're listening, I heard it, bud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thanks for the point. Well, did another well, one out of the bunker too, that one was Phil. Against Jordan, Phil. Yeah. That was a fun match. His career, you didn't hurt his career. Yeah, I think you inspired no. him. Yeah, he's kept going okay. I'll take credit for that, yeah. yeah. Anybody well, that wants to grab one of these birdies, he made things. He, that's another guy no one's talking about here this week. It's There's a lot of people nobody's talking yeah. about because one guy's dominating right. everything. Yeah. It's oh, got to be the best case scenario for all these dudes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Gideon. How are we doing? Uh, but it's time to make some picks, I think, with our guys from FanDuel. The these matter. Club. These matter these, big time. You better okay. get ready. If you okay. mess this up, you're never going to be invited back. Okay. All right. Golf's first major is a tradition unlike any other. And right now, new customers can get 30 to 1 odds on Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, or Dustin Johnson to make the cut at Augusta. 30 Good to bet. 1. 30 to 1. Good I mean, bet. Jordan, Rory, or Dustin. I mean, come on. Let's go. That's right. If any of those players make the cut, you win big. There's no better time to get in on the action with FanDuel Sportsbook. The app is easy to use. There's so many different betting options. And when you win, you get paid fast. Please help. Two fast. hours, bud. That's it. <laughs> Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and try to get 30 to 1 odds on Jordan Spieth, Roy McIlroy, or Dustin Johnson to make the cut at Augusta. All right, I think it's time for us to make some picks here, gentlemen. We're even bringing in our I'm special, ready. special. We got the brain. Game. We got the biggest brain we've ever had on we the show. We basically just go straight win here. Okay, That's all we try to win. do. We went on a freaking heater. We were hot. Yeah. We were By hot. the way, our picks last week, anyway, Gary Woodland, Adam Hadwin, we had some good, like, top tens. They didn't win, but... Gary Woodland, Adam Hadwin, both top ten. If you're, if you were... Well, why don't you tell people here, these are our picks to win, but... We like them to play well. We want yeah. them to win, but you could also bet them to top five. You can bet top win, top five, top ten, top twenty, still get paid. Win is the best, obviously. I, I mean, All right. We're going to let the guests do the honors. We like to go with favorite and then a dark horse. Okay. 
So my favorite, I'm gonna go, I think it's time for Justin Thomas to put on a green jacket. This is a problem. Every... This is an absolute problem, dude. What? I've been on Jordan, or on Justin Thomas for six, seven months. He's been my plan for Augusta. He's putting the green jacket on. Every person we have had on a show to do a master's prediction picks Justin Thomas. I will bet you he is the 10th easy, like, easy 10th person that we've had on that said Justin Thomas. Which leads me to believe, A, I should sprinkle something on Justin Thomas, but B, also, when everyone's Stay on something, public. I get a little bit of All right, just yeah. so you know, there's my pick. It's Justin Thomas as well. He's going off at 13-1. Okay. to 1. That's pretty nice odds, actually. 13-1? to 1. He's the second betting favorite. John Rahm is 12-1 to 1 over at FanDuel. Right, and he's moved up as time's gone on, JC. Right, so I'm going to go with a guy. Time. Knows a thing or two about a major, winning a major championship. He's getting what I feel like is zero, zero attention going into this week. Brooks Kepka, 19 to 1. By the way, throw out all recent form, all anything. As soon as a major championship comes around, that's a guy I circle. But I just feel like there's got to be, he loves to keep a chip on his shoulder. I'm not getting enough attention. I'm not getting the love I deserve. Brooks Kepka just sitting there, 19 to 1. Nobody batting an eye at him right now. Let's uh, Google Dark Horse before we accept that. I believe, he's not a Dark Horse. No, that's a favorite. Oh, that's, no, that's favorite. my favorite. Oh, okay. 19 to 1. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. I believe he's like the eighth betting favorite. 2016, he is 92 under par in major championships. The next best is Dustin Johnson at 28 under par. He's smashed. Like, it's good. disgusting how much better he's been at major championships than anybody else. Honestly, he doesn't get enough pub going into the majors as he deserves. For a guy that's rattled off four quick and seems sure. to always be there at the end, it's a, it's a, everyone it's, seems it's to steal the shine. All right, I'm going to give you a dark horse and then a dark, dark horse. A super dark, a midnight okay. horse. <laughs> I'm going to go with a guy who I just love to watch, and I think he should be mic'd up at all times because he's so angry and I love him. Yep. Terrell Hatton going off at 55 <laughs> to 1 with the wind blowing 30 miles an hour on Friday. He's a guy who just gets it done. He knows how to play golf. He doesn't go out and play golf. Swing. I love Terrell Hatton at 55 to 1. Dark, dark. I've picked him quite a few times lately. He's playing well. He's got three top tens and I think his last four starts. 85 to 1. Sprinkle a little bit on Gary Woodland. Mm. And his Jayhawks just won the national Man, championship. He's yeah. feeling good. He's, he's He'll come off that hangover by Thursday, I feel like. Okay, well, I don't have the odds in front of me, but my dark horse and another guy who plays good at every single major. Last I saw, he was like 50 to 1, but I don't know what it is. Louis Oosthuizen. He's a sweet Lou. Swinging Louis. I, I mean, like that it. thing just hits missiles. It looks like you could put him in he's your so pocket good. when you walk next to him, and he just hits missiles so out there. So calm. All right, I love that, Louis. I'm going with the guy. Having a good year, okay? When you look at his odds, I feel like he's undervalued this week. And when you look at where he's won, he's won at Riv, major championship golf course. He's won at Quell Hollow, oh, it is. major championship. <laughs> Hold on, raise your hand if you think you know the answer. Uh, and what did I say at the start of the year? As a bold prediction. Say it. Max Homa is going to go. win a major championship 75 to 1 for Max. He's a less. He's a, He's got higher odds than Tiger, who hasn't played golf in 14 Man, months, I basically. Love I was with that. Max the other day. We were talking, he's like, Dude, can you seriously believe Tiger has better odds than me to win the The guy's won like multiple times. He's won a bunch of times this year. Max, Tiger has 15 majors. Yeah, that's yes. why. You're when only 15 back. When they start, and 79 wins. Or 80 wins. Yeah, when they start designing clothing lines with your initials yeah. on it, then we'll start, you'll start getting a little more love around the betting right. boards. JT, JT Brooks. Correct. Favorites. Correct. All right, head over to our Twitter right now, at Golf Subpar to enter our special Major Week giveaway where you can win $50 in FanDuel Sportsbook credit just for sharing a photo of your Birdie Juice gear on the FanDuel bet slip. FanDuel Sportsbook, official betting operator of the PGA Tour. You ready for this disclaimer right here? This is where it gets listen, good. Oh, yeah. Listen, listen up right. for this. Do All it right. fast. Do All it right. fast. Must be 21 years older and present. Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, New Jersey, New York, or Wyoming. Must wager in designated offer market. Max bet $5. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-GAMBLER. Or visit fanduel.com slash RG in New Jersey, Iowa, or Illinois. 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369 in New York or 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Bam! Bust the bolt. Bust the bolt. Twist the yeah. He's like twist no. Yeah, you are like twist. Graham Dillette, thank hey, you so hey, much for we, joining us. We have to give a shout out to Scotty over here. Oh, man, Scotty, our in. beer runner over here, has been keeping us hydrated. We Scotty, got Scotty. Big time Scotty. thank you to Savannah River Brewing Company here in Augusta for allowing us to do our show here. And everyone, enjoy the 86 Masters, and we'll talk to you on next week's Golf Subpar. Thanks, boys. How's your back? <laughs> <laughs>